This is by far my favorite keyboard in the Keychron Q series. This is the Keychron Q8, an Ellis style board that is quite affordable and it even has one feature that is not found on other Keychron Q series, which does improve the user experience of the keyboard. So if you want a relatively affordable Ellis style keyboard, keep on watching this review of the Keychron Q8. First of all, what exactly is the Alice layout? Well, it's popularized by the TGR Alice, which is a keyboard designed by a Malaysian. Anyway, that particular keyboard has a similar layout, but it didn't have the arrow cluster and some of the function keys are placed on either sides of the keyboard. So it's not exactly the same, but it does look very similar. So the Q8. It's an Alice style keyboard with all of the typical features of a Keychron Q series keyboard, including a hot swap PCB, a gasket mount design, a knob if you want to for an extra $10, as well as screw in stabilizers. As for the one new feature of the Q8 that is not found on other Q series keyboards is the fact that it is tape modded out of the factory. There is literally a sheet underneath the PCB of the Q8 and this is typically a user modification and the fact that Keychron has done this out of the factory is really quite impressive even if they're not the first to do it. Now, prices. The barebone version starts at 175 US dollar while this fully assembled version costs 195 US dollar. As mentioned, if you want to have a knob installed to the top right corner, that's an extra $10 for both the fully assembled and barebone version. While the Keychron Q series has always offered pretty good value for money, it's especially good for the Q8 because at these price points, you'd be really hard pressed to find an Alice style keyboard with a metal case, believe it or not. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about features of the Q8 that I really, really like, starting with its sound profile. Thanks to the tape mod that comes straight out of the factory as mentioned, it does have a pretty unique sound signature compared to the rest of its siblings. It sounds a tad deeper, it sounds more clean, and yes, it's still a clacky keyboard in my opinion, but it doesn't have the shrillness of the previous models, if you will. There is, however, a slight bit of case ping still, but at head level, it's hard to pick this up, which is great compared to, say, the first iteration of the Keychron Q1 that was a super pingy keyboard. And then there's the typing experience of the Keychron Q8. Just like other Q series keyboards, it uses a gasket mounting system, but it feels a little bit on the stiff side. Yes, it does flex quite a bit if you press down on the keys, but the thing is, it has a stiffer steel plate rather than aluminium, so it makes for a stiffer typing experience. Don't get me wrong though, it's still not quite as stiff as the Keychron V1 or the Keychron K8 Pro that we've reviewed because those are tray mounted keyboards and they are far more stiff than the Keychron Q8. Of course, another positive of the Q8 is the fact that it has an Alice layout which is more comfortable in my opinion than a traditional keyboard. As you're typing on the Q8, your hand position is more like this than like this which doesn't feel as natural and it feels like you're uh, stretching more parts of your hand than just resting it like this which is more natural. If you're not a touch typist though, you may find it difficult to get used to this um, awkward position. But after a little bit of typing on it, I am sure most folks will be able to get used to this. There is also the fact that it has two Bs on the left and right column. So if you hit the B key with your left or right finger, you don't have to worry about that because it's available on both clusters of the Q8. As for other positives of the Keychron Q8, it's the same as other Q series keyboards. It has VR compatibility, so it's easy to change the mapping of the keyboard, even though you do have to go to Keychron's website to grab the JSON file. It's not too difficult, but it's still an extra step for you to take. Aside from that, there's also the hot swap PCB, which allows you to switch out the switches uh, <laughs> without needing to solder or desolder them. 
Last but not least are the screw-in stabilizers, which are pretty good straight out of the box. It does take a little bit on certain keys, but apply just a little bit of lube to it and you're all done. Alright, now let's talk about things that I don't like about the Q8, starting with the stabilizers. Yes, I said that the stabilizers are okay out of the box, but just hear this for yourself. So this is one side of the spacebar on the left side. This is the other side of the spacebar. Let's do that again. The difference in tonality shouldn't be this obvious on a spacebar. Now, we've tried adjusting the fit of the keycap on the stabilizers to see if it changes anything, and it actually does. It's more balanced after playing around with it, so if you want to eliminate this weird issue, we would definitely suggest swapping out the stock stabilizers for something else such as Duroc or TX stabilizers. Another aspect of the Q8 that I don't quite like is the overall looks of the keyboard. I mean, it, it does look quite nice to this whole Alice layout, but at the end of the day, this still has the same design language as other Keychron Q series keyboards. So you get these chunky bezels here and here, and it just makes for a keyboard that doesn't look quite as sleek as it should be. On the flip side, at least the USB-C port is now relatively in the middle of the keyboard. It's still shifted to the left a little bit because of the Mac and window key switch taking up space, but I would say this is still a better position than having the port on the extreme left, like how it is with the Q5 or the Q1. And that is about it for the shortcomings of the Keychron Q8. There aren't a lot, and honestly, if you want an Alice-style keyboard without really spending too much money, the Keychron Q8 is an excellent buy. After all, value for money has always been one of the main strengths of Keychron Q series keyboards, and it is no different with the Q8. So, to reiterate, the Keychron Q8 is an excellent buy if you're looking for an Alice-style keyboard without breaking the bank too much. After all, it starts from $175 US dollar, and it will be hard to find an alternative at this price point with the same feature set. As usual, we will leave you guys with a sound test of the Q8 at the end of this video, completely stock for the fully assembled model with Gatoron G Pro RAID switches, which are linear switches. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and always stay tuned for more good stuff to come here on this channel and nextshift.com.